Donald Trump just got indicted again. Uh, I believe this is his 742nd indictment. And um, this one is over January 6th. This one is over trying to overturn the results of the election that he lost by about 7 million votes. Okay. So um, what you're about to see here is, honestly, some of the laziest stuff I've ever seen in my life. It's lazy. It's sloppy. It's not thought out. They had this talking point locked and loaded before we even got the indictment. So it's a 45-page indictment. I highly, highly recommend that all of you find the time to just go read it. It's an easy read. You know, uh, it's, it's written in a way that's very easy to understand. There's not so much legal language that you're sitting there like, oh, I don't know what that means. No, it's all very, you know, intuitive. So go read the 45-page indictment. And then if you do, you will understand just how much these people aren't even trying anymore when it comes to defending Trump. Now, they still, the passion is still there, the heart is still there, but the substance, oh my God, the substance is lacking on another level. We'll begin with Jesse Waters, and this is hilarious because he's making a point that I made the other day, except he's making it because he thinks it's exculpatory, <laughs> which is, I mean, I can't even wrap my mind around how stupid that is. So this is Jesse Waters' defense of Donald Trump after the indictments over January 6th. They lead off with saying the president lied about election fraud and knew there was no fraud. <laughs> How do they know that he knew that there was no fraud? And if this goes to trial, are we going to now have to go back and find fraud in the 2020 election? Is this now what we're going to go relitigate? Does this open up the entire 2020 election in a court setting to Donald Trump? going back and proving that there was indeed fraud and presenting evidence of fraud and having that challenged in the court? Is this really what we're going to do? And now they're saying that it was a conspiracy to fraudulently claim there was no fraud. <laughs> That's what, this is the first page. The word that comes to mind as I watch this is adorable. Jesse Waters is adorable. He's saying what I said the other day. Okay, look, you are so convinced that the election was rigged, that, you know, they threw it to Joe Biden. They screwed you out of winning at Donald Trump. Okay, well, you're going to be in a court setting. You go ahead and present all of the evidence that you got. And let's see what happens. Let's see how it goes. Now, Jesse Waters brings this up as if there's a snowball's chance in hell that Donald Trump will actually bring enough evidence to say, see, I did win the election. No, you didn't. Jack Weasel, of course he's not going to be able to meet that bar because they've already tried over 60 times and failed miserably, miserably. Now, even to the point of like, how do you know that he's lying? Well, this is all laid out in the indictment. He may believe it. He may not believe it. But the fact of the matter is they lay out this incredibly long list of high ranking officials who told him in no uncertain terms Sir, you are wrong. Sir, this is incorrect. Sir, you didn't win the election. Sir, there wasn't widespread fraud. The list is endless from like state legislators to secretaries of state to the Department of Justice to uh, top staffers within the executive branch. They have a, so in other words, even if he believed it, that's not necessarily something that's going to get him off if he really believed the election was stolen. Because any reasonable person, based on the evidence and based on what he was presented with, would have said, hey, look, at the very least, there's colossal doubt that I'm right about this. And so we have to go through the proper processes. So he brings this up as if it's like, aha, checkmate, liberals. You guys are bringing him to court, but maybe he'll pull a jujitsu move and show you guys in court that the election actually was stolen. Jesse, I don't even think you're stupid enough to believe that. And by the way, based on some of his own words, it seems like he knew the election wasn't stolen. He said about Mike Pence as he was prodding him to try to overturn the election, he was like, ah, oh, Mike's too honest. So if he's too honest, that means you know he's right, but you want him to do the wrong thing anyway. There's a whole bunch of quotes exactly like that, which is like, Trump and the people around him being like, yeah, what we're doing is crazy. This is crazy. And so there's enough evidence where somebody will either conclude he knew when he was lying on purpose, or even if he didn't know and he really thought he won the election, there was so much presented to him 
that disprove that, that any reasonable person would not have gone forward in the way he went forward, which definitely violated the law in a number of ways. And I'm going to come back to that in a second because I want to show you the next reaction. So this is Greg Gutfeld. Now, this line that Greg Gutfeld is going to give you, this is the line that most of them have settled on. I honestly find it amazing the message discipline that conservative pundits have and conservative politicians have because every single one of the people talking about this had this talking point locked and loaded, okay? It is such a bogus talking point. It's astonishing, and I'm going to disprove it in a second, but just know this is their main defense of Trump, and it is the weakest sauce of all time. So here's Greg Gutfeld. It's really hard for me to take this seriously, and I don't think any sensible American should, they, they should take what's happening very seriously. It should anger them. But the actual charges you can't take seriously. Their feelings masquerading as facts. Their opinions trying to be passed off as crimes. It's garbage dressed up with a legal thesaurus. And it's criminalizing thought and it's criminalizing speech. It's criminalizing thought and it's criminalizing speech. They're trying to say, oh, this violates the First Amendment. He's allowed to say these things. Hold on. Keep that thought in your mind. Let's listen to the rest. Then I'll show you Hannity saying the same thing. Then I'll show you why this is literally addressed on page two of the indictment. Jack Smith knew these idiots were going to say this, and so he addressed it directly. I mean, is every institution perfect? We is, I mean, what if, I, what if we criminalize the idea that if you said the justice system was flawed? What if we told you that, right. you know what? You're saying the justice system is rigged? You're going to jail. But that's been the common refrain. That has not at all been the common refrain, you absolute smug liar. Hatred for Trump has turned the haters into what they claim to condemn. These are all the things that they would have accused him of that he never did. This is why I can't take it seriously. I have a hard time. This is why I draw things. It's my <laughs> therapy. So there's Gutfeld. Here's Hannity saying the exact same thing. They're all going with this exact same line. Let us be very clear at the start here tonight. This is an incredibly weak, baseless, convoluted indictment it is bizarrely centered around what is clearly protected speech zero criminal statutes because there are none that were applicable that are actually written into law it is based on an obscure law from the civil war so let's be even more clear this indictment is frankly not worth the paper that it's printed on this is a political persecution through and through on page two of the indictment. Two. The defendant had a right, like every American, to speak publicly about the election and even to claim falsely that there had been outcome determinative fraud during the election and that he had won. Let me repeat that. The defendant had a right, like every American, to speak publicly about the election and to, even to claim falsely there had been an outcome determinative fraud during the election and that he had won. Totally allowed to do that. This is not what he's on trial for. He continues. He was also entitled to formally challenge the results of the election through lawful and appropriate means, such as by seeking recounts or audits of the popular vote in states or filing lawsuits challenging ballots and procedures. So in other words, Jack Smith not only said you have every right, free speech, say whatever you want about the election. He's also saying you have every right to legally challenge the election. So he's even going above and beyond what the criticism is from Fox News and from other conservatives. You could say whatever you want. You could feel however you want. And you could even try by any legal means necessary to get the results overturned. Okay, let's continue. Indeed, in many cases, the defendant did pursue these methods of contesting the election results. His efforts to change the outcome in any state through recounts, audits, or legal challenges were uniformly unsuccessful. Shortly after Election Day, the defendant also pursued unlawful means of discounting legitimate votes and subverting the election, subverting the election results. In doing so, the defendant perpetrated three criminal conspiracies. Then he goes on to claim a conspiracy to defraud the United States by using dishonesty, fraud, and deceit to impair, obstruct, and defeat the lawful federal government function by which the results of the presidential election are collected, counted, and certified by the federal government in violation of, that's the code, a conspiracy to corruptly obstruct and impede the January 6th congressional proceeding at which the collected results of the presidential election are counted and certified, a conspiracy against the right to vote and to have one's vote counted in violation of 18 U.S.C. So, let me explain what all of that means. You can say whatever you want. You can feel however you want. You can legally challenge whatever you want. 
it only became unlawful when you set up the fake electors. You set up the fake electors. By the way, you're such a colossal idiot that you literally left a paper trail in the process of doing it. And then you sent the, the papers to Mike Pence and said, see, you have legal justification. They even, guys, they even referred to the fake electors in their own emails as fake electors. So in other words, they're doing parallel infrastructure, election infrastructure. And because they did that, they were trying to disenfranchise the votes of millions of people in the swing states who actually decided we prefer Biden over Donald Trump. So that's where that last part comes from, a conspiracy against the right to vote and to have one's vote counted. Saying you're trying to disenfranchise millions of people because you're setting up a whole fake elector slate. You're doing fake paperwork. This is fraud against the U.S. government. And then you're using that to try to force Mike Pence to throw out the results of the election, even though his role is ceremonial on January 6th. That is where the crime is. The crime comes about as a direct result of the fake electors slates. Not a single one of these ghouls, these goblins, these liars, and these frauds address that point. Look, they, I, I don't even think they read any of the indictment. Because like I said, this is addressed on page two. And they came locked and loaded with the, this is a war on uh, free speech. You're allowed to say this. You're allowed to, to feel however you want to feel about the election. Jack Smith literally says, yeah, of course you are. You are. You're also allowed to legally challenge the election. So there's nothing in this indictment about your 60 plus court cases trying to get the results changed. That's all perfectly legal. Now you lost every one of those. The real crime comes about when you set up the fake elector slate. There was open talk about invoking the Insurrection Act and just, you know, basically forcing, using the military Donald Trump to stay in office after January 20th. Discussions at the highest level of government. And then, of course, you have the issue of him trying to force secretaries of state who oversee the, uh, the election results in all the states, forcing them in seven different states. Hey, find me the votes I need to win. Do the right thing here. Say that I won. That's when where the crimes came about. That's where it came about. Like, he really didn't do much regarding January 6th in terms of the riot or the attempted insurrection. Because on that day, Trump spoke out of both sides of his mouth. And he, like, condemned the violence at times while also sat back and sort of let it unfold for a while to see which way it would go. But he gave himself enough legal cover. And Jack Smith is smart enough to know that. So Jack Smith focused on the other things which are clearly, clearly problematic and very likely illegal, the fake elector slate. And so again, none of these charlatans even address that point. They go right to, well, it's a war on free speech. You're saying he can't say he won the election. That is not at all what he's saying. And if you read even a little bit of the indictment, you would have known that. Or maybe they did read it and they're lying on purpose because that's what they do. That's their job. But this is incredibly dishonest. And it's brainwashing millions and millions of Americans, people who tune into Fox News and watch Fox News and take them at their word. And it really is, um, it's really disgusting, man. It's really gross. Because if you go through this indictment, they go, they, have a, they go through with a fine-tooth comb, man. They did a lot of work in this indictment. He's got six co-conspirators, including Rudy Giuliani and Eastman, who's an attorney, and Sidney Powell, who's the biggest crank attorney on the planet. You know, they have the list of all of the people who told Trump, you're wrong, the election wasn't stolen, there is no fraud, we tried to, we looked and we couldn't find anything, and blah, blah, blah. They go through it with a fine-tooth comb. And he is meticulous in saying, this part wasn't a crime, but that is a crime. And they just hand wave it away. Why? Because they're playing for a team, because they're partisan hacks. They're on Team Trump, and they're partisan hacks. So look. Don't take my word for it. I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you go, to go and read the 45-page indictment. And you make your own mind up. You make your own mind up. I think it was brilliantly done. I do. Because I think he was nuanced enough to know areas where it would be a stretch to go after Trump. And this, I don't see anything that's a stretch. I see everything in a ver very, very straightforward. So ironically, he's the one trying to do election interference or overturning an election, rigging an election, as he cries that it's the Democrats and Biden and all of his opponents who are doing it. So anyway, there you have it. Um, again, just incredibly dishonest. These guys should be ashamed of themselves. I mean, I know they're not smart, but they're definitely smarter than this, and they don't care. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. 
Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop, and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.